Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Tyler, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support of amazing patrons like Tyler, so again, Tyler, thank you so much. And actually for this episode, Tyler's gonna handle the intro for me. Hello Mitch, this is Tyler from California, happy to be back. For this deck tech, I'd like to see how you build Thanos Urza's Apprentice with a focus on combat control and my favorite artifact, Magnetic Web. So, Thanos Urza's Apprentice is a 1-3 Human Artificer with haste that costs blue-red. He has Pay Blue-Red, Tap, Copy Target, Activated or Triggered Ability, you control from the artifact source, you may choose new targets for the copy. So, Thanos is a lower-the-ground commander that can give us some additional value out of artifacts. By doubling up an artifact's trigger or activated ability, we can get twice as much value out of it. Especially when it comes to that artifact that Tyler already mentioned with Magnetic Web, and we'll get to that card here in just a bit. That being said, before we jump into it, I want to say that every single card in this deck is less than $1, including the commander, so it's a very budget-friendly deck. Also, as I go through the cards in this episode, I'm going to be breaking things down into different tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're going to win with it. And of course, if you are interested in this deck, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. And now with all that said, let's jump into it. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which you can pay 2 to tap and sacrifice to get a basic land into play tapped. And of course, keep in mind that with Thanos, we can double up this activated ability. So we're also going to be running the bigger somewhat Bobble with Navigation Orb, which has pay 2 tap, sacrifice it, get 2 basics into play tapped. And then Burnish Heart can also get those 2 basics into play tapped by paying 3 to sacrifice it. Another artifact trigger that we can double up though comes with Psalm Simulacrum, which has when it enters the battlefield, you may search your life for a basic, put it into play, tap, then shuffle, and of course on top of that, when it dies, you may draw a card. So we can double up either one of these or each of these triggers. Another ability that we can double up with Thanos is Surveyor Scope, which has tap, exile, Surveyor Scope, search your life for X basic land cards or X the number of players who control at least two more lands than you, put those cards on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. And though we can't double up the mana abilities for Mindstone and Hedron Archive, we can double up their card draw. Mindstone can tap for a color, so we can pay one to tap and sacrifice it to draw a card, and Hedron Archive basically is just double this. And finally, we're also going to round out our ramp package with a very flexible mana rock with our flowing chalice, Arcane Scene, which can tap for either of our colors, and Cold Seal Heart, which enters the battlefield tapped, and we choose a color, and it can tap for that color. But now that we've talked about ramping and getting ourselves set up, Let's move on to the golden pick of this deck, which is of course the number one card out of 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Magnetic Web. Magnetic Web is an older card, so I'm going to read its Oracle Tax. It's an artifact for two that says, If a creature with a magnet counter on it attacks, all creatures with magnet counters on them attack if able. And whenever a creature with a magnet counter on it attacks, all creatures with magnet counters on them block that creature this turn if able. And by paying one weekend tap to put a magnet counter on target creature. So, this is a fantastic way to actually force attacks as well as force blocks, and again, this is an ability that we can double up with our commander. So, we can spread out more and more of those magnet counters on them quicker, and force again those attacks and those blocks. So, this card can be incredibly deadly in combination with a lot of other effects, and yeah, of course, we've got ways to force those creatures that have magnet counters on them to attack, to force all the other magnet counter creatures to attack and block. This card can be fantastic at helping us control combat, and of course again with our commander, well we can double this up to make it go even quicker. So of course, since this deck is well basically built around this card, it is of course the golden pig of this deck. And because of that, of course, we've got some ways to actually go get this card with cards like Tribute Mage, which has, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your life for an artifact card, convert mana cost to reveal it, put in your hand, then shuffle, and Hoarding Dragon, which has, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your life for an artifact card, exile, then shuffle your library, and when Hoarding Dragon dies, you may put the exile card into its owner's hand. And of course, on top of ways to tutor for this, we've also got ways to double up on the activated ability of it, and our other activated abilities as well, with Kirkesh Onaki Ancient. It says, whenever you activate an ability of an artifact, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay red. If you do copy that ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. So again, with Kirkesh in combination with our commander, with just one activation of Magnetic Web, we can get three activations for just, well, you know, blue, red, red, three additional mana. 
which of course can help us get those magnet counters out there even quicker. But as I've said, of course, we've got plenty of other ways to force attacks and to specifically force those magnet creatures to attack so that they bring all the other magnet creatures with them. So of course, we're going to be heavily utilizing the goad mechanic with cards like Bloodthirsty Blade, Besmirch, and Sly Instigator. We can pay one to attach Bloodthirsty Blade to a creature in opponent controls, and it's going to give that equipped creature plus two, plus zero, and is goaded. Which of course means that it attacks each combat of Fable, and attacks a player other than us of Fable. Next up, there's Besmirch, which is a threaten effect that's going to gain its control of a creature until end of turn, and it gains haste, but on top of that, that creature is also goaded, so it has to attack a player than us of Fable until our next turn. And then Sly Instigator has pay a blue, tap until your next turn, tar creature and opponent controls can't be blocked, goad that creature. So this can be a great way to force an attack and also, in many circumstances, to hurt an opponent a lot. Moving on, we also have some ongoing goat effects, though, with Psychic Impetus and Shiny Impetus. Each of these give Enchanted Creature plus two, plus two, and they're goaded, and Psychic Impetus says, whenever Enchanted Creature attacks you, scry two, and Shiny Impetus says, whenever it attacks you, create a treasure token. So some nice additional value whenever those creatures are forced to attack. And then Popular Entertainer says, Commander Creatures you own have, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, goad, target creature, that player controls. Again, our commander is is very low to the ground and easy to get out, so yeah, this can provide us a lot of value throughout the game. Speaking of value, next up we've got Mocking Doppelganger, which is a clone that is actually going to become a copy of a creature to bonus controls and also goad that creature. Well, other creatures that have the exact same name. And then Enchanter Ant is a 2-2 that has the beginning of your end step. Each player may put two plus one counters on a creature they control. Go to each creature that counters put on it this way. So this can make our opponent's creatures even deadlier and also encourage some attacks. Speaking of which, there's Bothersome Quasit, which is a 3-2 Demon with Menace that says, go to creatures your opponent's control can't block, and on top of that, whenever you're casting a non-creature spell, go to our creature opponent controls. So this benefits us in multiple ways, not allowing the goaded creatures to actually block at all, and on top of that, forcing more and more goads. Speaking of which, we also have Geode Rager, which is a 4-3 with the first strike that has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, go to each creature target player controls. This can put a lot of hurt on a lot of our opponents throughout the game. And then Vengeful Ancestor has when it enters the battlefield or attacks go target creature, and of course whenever a go to creature attacks, it deals one damage to its controller. So this can force a lot of attacks and really punish our opponents for having go to creatures. On the other end of things though, we've got Furk Rog Cunning Instigator, which says whenever one or more dragons you control attack an opponent, go target creature that player controls. And whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, if that creature had to attack this combat, you put a plus one counter on Furk Rog Cunning Instigator, and you draw a card. So this can get absolutely massive in no time and draw us an absurd amount of cards throughout the game. We can also get a lot of value out of Death's Kiss though, which says whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks one of your opponents, double its power until end of turn. So this can help force our opponent's creatures to hit even harder, and it's got monstrosity for XX and a red, and when it becomes monstrous, go to X hard creatures your opponent's control. So this can go to a lot of creatures and again, force opponents to attack each other, or, you know, actually encourage opponents to just attack each other on their own. And then, of course, Disrupt Decorum is a fantastic goat spell. Go to all creatures you don't control. For just four mana, this can be a ton of value and a ton of damage to our opponents. Speaking of which, there's Spectacular Showdown, which is a sorcery that says put a double strike counter on target creature, then go to each creature that a double strike counter put on it this way. And of course, we can overload it to basically make it target every creature for four red, red, red. So this can essentially make every creature on the board hit incredibly hard and hit our opponents very hard. But of course, we're not quite done with messing with our opponent's combats just yet. So first up, we've got Frenzied Sound Root, which is a 5-4 with haste that says all creatures can attack your opponents and planeswalkers your opponents control as though those creatures had haste. So this can just encourage our opponents to attack each other by saying, hey, you get your creature into play anyways, it can't attack me, but you know, now it's got haste to attack an opponent, so go for it. And then Domineering Will is another great way to mess with our opponent's combat. It says target player gains control of up to three target non-attacking creatures until end of turn and untap those creatures they block this turn if able. This can be a fantastic way to mess with an opponent and to get rid of a lot of creatures at once. And then Dulcet Sirens is a very interesting card in this deck. It has pay a blue, tap target creature, attacks target opponent this turn if able. So this is somewhat similar to Goad, but we can actually specify exactly who we want that creature to attack. 
Some other cards that can really help us out in combat, though, are cards like Aetherize, Aether Spouts, and Reigns of Power. Aetherize is going to bounce every attacking creature. Aether Spout says for each attacking creature its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library, and then Reigns of Power is going to have us basically switch boards with an opponent. It says untap all creatures you control and all creatures target opponent controls. You and that opponent each gain control of all creatures the other controls until end of turn. Those creatures gain haste until end of turn. Now, when it comes to cards like these in Domineering Will, because we can mess with our opponent's combats and they're going to start knowing that we have cards like these, it's going to make it very difficult for them, even when they can attack us, to actually decide to attack us because, well, we can really set them back and throw a massive wrench into their plans if they do so. Next up, though, we can also utilize our opponent's creatures with cards like Mass Mutiny, Mob Rule, and even Mimic Vat. Mass Mutiny says for each opponent gain control of up to one target creature that player controls until end of turn, untap those creatures that gain haste until end of turn. We can also have our opponent's creatures do our dirty work for us, though, with Mob Rule, which says choose one, gain control of all creatures' power for a greater until end of turn, untap those creatures that gain haste until end of turn, or the exact same thing, but for creatures with power three or less. But then Mimic Vat is a fantastic way to get additional value out of specific creatures. It says, imprint, whenever a non tone creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do return each other card exiled Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard, pay three, tap, create a token that's a copy of a card exiled Mimic Vat, it gains haste, exile begin the next end step. Again, with goading and other ways to manipulate combat, we can really easily take out creatures, and by taking out some of the best creatures out there, we can get Mimic Vat to make copies of them for us. And of course, keep in mind that since this is an artifact, we can copy this with our commander to get double the value. And speaking of comping artifacts for value, let's talk about cards like Oracle's Vault, Trading Post, and Wand of Wonder. Oracle's Vault has pay 2, tap, exile the top card of your library. Until end of turn, you may play that card, put a brick counter on Oracle's Vault. And once we get three brick counters on it, we can tap it to exile the top card of our library until end of turn we can play that card without paying its mana cost. And again, with our commander, we can really double this up for a lot of value. Speaking of value, Trading Post is a very flexible card that has pay one and tap, discard a card, you gain four life, one and tap, pay one life, create a zero one goat creature token, pay one and tap, sacrifice a creature, return target artifact card from your grave to your hand, and pay one and tap, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. So yeah, depending on the situation that you're in, many of these can be very helpful, and again, doubling them up might be doubly helpful. But one massive effect comes with Wand of Wonder, which has pay four, tap, roll a d20. Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they hit an insert sorcery card, and then you can cast X of those based on your roll. So if you roll a 1 through 9, one of those is free. If you cast a 10 through 19, two of them are free, and if you roll a 20, you cast all them for free. Next up, though, how about yet another artifact with Combustible Gearhawk, which is a 6-6 with first strike, and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If they don't, you mill three cards, then it's going to deal damage to that player because of the total mana value of those cards. And of course, we've got some other ways to draw cards, and a lot of cards at that with Pull for Tomorrow and Commander's Insight. Each are going to have us draw X cards in instant speed. Pull for Tomorrow says draw X cards and discard a card, and Commander's Insight is going to make target player draw X cards plus an additional card for each time you've cast your commander for the command zone this game. Moving on, we've also got Big Score, Unexpected Windfall, and Pirate's Pillage, all of which basically do the exact same thing. We discard one card to draw two and create two treasure tokens. And then we've also got some other four mana card advanced spells with Factor Fiction, Behold a Multiverse, and Chemistry's Insight. Factor Fiction is going to help us remove the top five cards of our library and punch separate those cards in the two piles. One goes into our hand, the other goes into our graveyard. And then Behold a Multiverse has Scry to draw two, or we can foretell it for one in a blue, and Chemistry's Insight has us draw two, and we can jumpstart it to cast it again. But now that we've talked about some ways to dig deeper into our deck, let's talk about some ways to deal with our opponent's things. <laughs> So, next up, let's talk about Meteor Golem, which has, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. And, of course, keep in mind, with these artifacts, well, we can double them up with our commander. So, then we've also got Duplicate, which has an ETB that's going to exile target non-token creature. And, speaking of deal with creatures, there's Transmogrifying Wand, which is going to enter the battlefield with three charge counters on it. By paying one to remove a charge counter from it to take out a creature and give that player a 2-4 ox instead. Next up, there's Spine of Ishsa, which has, when it enters the battlefield, destroy a target permanent, and Steel Hellkite has, by paying X, which for each non-land permanent mana value X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Next up, we've got a fantastic damage-based board wipe with Chain Reaction that's going to deal X damage to each creature X the number of creatures on the battlefield. And we can also take out a lot of things with Aether Gale, which is going to bounce six target non-land permanents back to their owner's hands. And of course, we can also bounce some things with Alchemist Retrieval and Depart the Realm. Alchemist Retrieval can just cost one if we bounce one of our things, or two if we bounce an opponent's thing. Whereas Depart the Realm can cost just one if we foretell it, and it's going to bounce target non-land permanent back to its owner's hand. 
And finally, we can also throw a wrench in our opponent's planes with cards like Negate, Unwind, and Salt Coming, which are fantastic counter spells. Negate's going to counter target non creature spell. Unwind can do the exact same thing, but it lets us untap to three lands. And Salt Coming can counter any spell, and we can foretell it for one in a blue. But now that we've talked about every single non land card in this deck, let's talk about the lands. Command Tower can tap for either of our colors, and Exotic Orch can do so most of the time, and then Ash Barons has basic land cycling for just one. And then we've got three lands, which can each be sacrificed to get us a basic end play tapped, and Mysore's Theater can even gain us one life when it does so. Moving on, there's Mirror Landscape, which actually helped ramp us by getting us two of our basics that cherry land type into play tapped, and then Temple of Epiphany is going to have a scry one when it comes into play tapped, and we can also tap for either our colors. Is a Boilerworks also enters Battlefield tapped, and it's going to bounce a land we control back to our hand, but it can tap for both of our colors. And finally, we're going to be rounding out this stack with basics with islands and mountains. But now that we've talked about every single land in this deck, let's talk about the price. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, every single card in this deck is less than $1, which makes it a very budget-friendly deck at just $32.15. And actually, that estimate cost does include basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so you might be able to save even more if you've already got those basics. Speaking of potential savings, you might be able to save even more than that if you actually buy this deck on TCG Player and utilize heavily played and damaged cards, which of course need a home too. Though, do keep in mind that that estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you, so make sure you comment below and let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.